Ah, good morning and welcome to a Monday edition of PCA Live. We are continuing with our shows all about the show exclusive products or show only products that are going to be available at next week's. Now we can say next week's Premium Cigar Association 2021 trade show, the Cigar Family Reunion. We are back. The band is getting back together after two years. And we're really excited because a lot of manufacturers have decided that they were going to make show exclusive products this year especially for those retailers who are coming to the show so they can get their hands on some truly unique products. So today we are very, very happy to be joined by Jeff Hogan, the founder and CEO of Crux Cigar. So I'm going to bring up Aaron Holland from the Premium Cigar Association to join me along with Jeff. Jeff, welcome to PCA Live. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. You're up a little earlier too, right? You're uh, in Minnesota, correct? Minnesota, but you know, yeah. we you know, we're Scandinavian in Minnesota, so we, <laughs> we tend to get up uh, when the sun comes up. So I'm usually up five thirty, six AM. Very nice, very nice. So has it has it actually broken above freezing in Minnesota at this point? We've had we, I think like the rest of the yeah, uh, barely, but like the rest <laughs> of the country we've had uh, we've had a lot of heat. Um, yeah. um but now it's now it's back to Minnesota, beautiful, uh, beautiful summers, thirteen thousand lakes, everybody's out on the water playing golf, smoking cigars, enjoying, enjoying the good life. Outstanding. Outstanding. All right. So let's um, just find out a little bit. So Crux is a fairly new company. If you could kind of walk through that, there might be some retailers out there wondering um, about your company. If we could kind of introduce them to Crux Cigars and then we can, uh, then we can go from there. Yes. Uh, Crux Cigars is a relatively new company. Uh, started uh, uh, in 2014. That's when we shipped our, our first cigars. Um, a little different than other companies, we came up with five different uh, lines of cigars all at the same time. Uh, initially, we were trying to build cigars uh, uh, for the underserved market, smaller ring gauge Vitolas. We did the Nympha cigar. We did some other things. Um, it was a, a, a few year process prior to 2014 of spending uh, three months a year in Nicaragua, learning about tobacco, learning about blending, uh, really putting our hearts and souls into uh building a company that could be around for years to come. Awesome. And the name Crux, uh, you know, when I first heard of it, I thought, you know, it was like, you know, the Crux, the Crux of the matter, but I think there's a little bit more depth to the, to the name, if you can kind of explain that. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Um, you know, it, it has a number of, you know, Crux is a constellation. Uh, it's, it's, it's origin is it means a crucifixion cross. Um, why we use Crux is, um, it, you know, it is, particularly in this industry, and I think a lot of retailers can relate, uh, we face a lot of crossroads in uh, this business, legislatively, uh, both at the federal level, the state level. Um, you know, things are rapidly changing and evolving in this business. And, um, you know, usually when you're building companies, you try to build it by decade. You try to build it at least uh, five-year marketing plans, three-year forecasts. Uh, it's really difficult for a lot of retailers to do that. And, um, and I started off as a retailer 28 years ago. So uh, I'm, I'm very um, understanding to what retailers go through state by state level. You know, one day things can be going great. The next day, um, you know, with a stroke of a pen legislatively, your entire business model has changed and you have to rewrite it and you right. have to reconnect with your customers and, and, and uh, short of begging, really, uh, build those relationships so they keep buying yep. cigars from your retail store. Um, we've kind of carried that through with everything we do in Crux. There's kind of like um, uh, a, a few ways of building a company. And, and I always believe that um, you take your time, you put some real thought into it. You, you don't always take the path of least resistance. And so, uh, you know, sometimes building this uh, a company, uh, it'll take a lot longer, but if you do it the right way, you put that time in and you take that path less least traveled, uh, you know, you're going to come out with a, uh, some incredible things. You're going to, uh, you know, you're going to come out with great people that are working in the organization. Um, and, and once again, and then you can build a company, a good foundation. You can build that company for uh, many decades to come, which is what we're trying to do. We're kind of a family business. Uh, we have uh, uh, Casey uh, Hogan, uh, as vice president of the company, uh, he he really has uh, put his heart and soul into this company as well. Over the last five six years, works tirelessly and uh, wears a lot of hats in the company from supply chain 
uh, to uh, making sure our warehouse, because we handle our own distribution, our warehouse and offices in Boca Raton, Florida, are uh, operating efficiently and, and uh, smoothly. And then he handles a lot of sales. He moves all around the country. So he's really a, uh, a, a very strong pillar in our organization. Uh, we have another cousin, Casey Hogan, that's in the uh, company as well. He came on with us about a year and a half ago and since has just been um, doing an incredible job opening up quality brick and mortar retail stores. And, and um, so we're happy to have him as well. And the only other guy we have in the company, Sam Ventura, he doesn't share the same last name as Casey, Tony and I, but we truly view him as family. And he's just, he's another pillar of the organization. And so uh, we have plans for all, all of these guys to really move along in this organization. So hope that answers the questions on, on Crux, but the short of it is it's, it is kind of a crossroads. And so you, you, you go one way, you go the other way, but hopefully you're, you're doing it the right way. And that's, that's what we try to do is do things the right way. Yeah, as you talked about that aspect, I thought it was a pretty uh, appropriate um, parallel to just even the craft of, of making a cigar in and of itself, right? You don't want to rush the process. You want to make sure it's right. You want to make sure that it's it's exactly what you want in the way that you want it. Uh, you know, and you say the path of least resistance, what's that old saying that it makes, you know, men in rivers crooked? I think it probably makes a bad cigar as well, right? That's right. So I think that that's a, uh, I think, you know, a lot of companies would probably um, applaud that and probably attract the same way, at least the, the successful ones in this industry. Um, yes. Got to say good good morning to Orlando Perez. I believe Orlando is even up earlier than everybody because he's out on the West Coast. So I uh, hope everything's well out there, Orlando. Um, good morning, Orlando. So, um, uh, one of the things I did actually want to talk before we, we dive and we're going to spend the majority of the time here coming up on this special cigar that you have coming out for the show. But one of the things uh, really interesting to me, uh, you know, my background in marketing for, for 20 some odd years um, and good morning to Jay Davis as well. Joining us from Texas. He says, love me some crux. Hey Jay. So we'll say hi to good old Jay down there at, uh, in Dallas, Texas. So, Back in 2019, well, you, know, you got an award for your booth, and uh, what Casey was telling me then and kind of showed me is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the year you guys, was that 2019 the year you unveiled your rebrand, or was it the year before? Uh, tw 2019 was the new booth. It yeah. was the rebrand. It was right. We, we yeah. stripped the company down uh, and started over. Yeah, so that rebrand, I don't know if you could kind of show the band there, but I thought you guys absolutely crushed it out of the park with that rebrand. And I didn't have any uh, familiarity with the brand beforehand, but when I saw it, I was like, man, this is, it's super clean. It's, 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 it's powerful. It's evocative. And it kind of uh, told a, a great story with the brand. Um, and so I just, you know, kind of talk about that a little bit because it's been a couple of years and because of the pandemic, you kind of haven't had necessarily the opportunity to kind of showcase that rebrand in the way that you would have wanted to, but talk about that, that process and kind of what that means. Because, uh, I thought that the, the packaging, the colors, the, the lettering, everything else, I just think is, was on point, um, with that rebrand. Yeah. The, uh, so what, what happened is, uh, as I mentioned before, we started launching, we launched our cigars in 2014. Um, uh, and five years into it, uh, I wanted to make sure that we were on, on track, uh, to, uh, doing some good things in our company. And, and, uh, so we talked internally about what's working for our company, what's not working. What, and, and so we quickly realized that our, I, I feel like our blends were always really good. Uh, they were well received. Uh, the sales did not reflect what we had put into the cigar itself. And, you know, so instead of just, you know, you know, pounding down doors and asking retailers to carry the, the cigars, uh, we, we hired a company out of Texas, uh, Go Local, a uh, very good organization, a uh, smaller company that uh, we now consider family and part of our team. And uh, we brought up some of the struggles that we were having with the brand. And, and so we did kind of a, a focus group. Uh, of our current, or at that time, our current branding, which is now our old branding. And that feedback through that focus group and, and we, that brand was tested in front of uh, cigar smokers and non-cigar smokers. And what we found out is, yeah, the, the blends were good for the cigar smokers, but they didn't, they, they couldn't read the cigar band. They couldn't, uh, it, it really, the cigars, because of its colors and, and it just blended into the rest of the humidor. It didn't really, nothing really stood out. And so um, 
So we just, at that point, we, you know, as expensive as it was, we decided we need to go in a different direction. We're going to take that feedback and, and we're going to, we're going to learn from it and we're going to try to build, um, uh, uh, you know, better packaging, uh, you know, branding that was uh, recognizable, that was, uh, we wanted something timeless, something that was clean. And, uh, and so, yeah, we stripped it all down. So from, from our, our, our logo itself uh, to the icons, the sub-brand iconography, we changed all the icons to the color palette for the entire company. And of yeah. course, all of the packaging. So um, uh, I'll grab a cigar here, but, you know, basically you can see kind of the new, uh, yeah, yeah, just a much, much cleaner look. Um, I don't have the, an old cigar to show, yeah. uh, but we decided that we were going to stick with the five packs in the boxes. So every cigar back box comes with, uh, it's packed 20, 20 cigars per box on the right side. You're going to have 10 single cigars that are cellophane and barcoded on the, the left side of the box. You're going to have two five packs that are barcoded five packs. And on the bottom of the box, you'll have a, a third point of purchase, uh, another barcode. So the goal for us was to train our retail partners to have them try one cigar, move them to a five pack, and then ultimately a box buy. So wow. you essentially have three points of purchase in, uh, in, in every uh, cigar box. And so... That's what we did, and it was it was uh, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure to work with these guys in Texas, and, and it was a it was a long process. It took us about a year to go through that whole mm -hmm. thing, and, and the whole team was involved. Uh, we we included everybody, and everybody had a voice, and collectively, I think we came out with a really uh, we hit the goal, which is you know clean, easy to read, timeless, uh, and 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 colorful. And so that's what yeah. shows up on the shelves now. As far as sales, it was a uh, difference. It was a 10 time multiplier at least. Wow. Yeah. Once we went to the new packaging, uh, it just, uh, you know, it, it, it was, it became very um, less resistance, of course, of getting the new brand into retail partners and, and finding retail partners. But more importantly, the sales continued, you know, and I, I think retailers can relate that you can, you can try a new brand and, uh, you know, you'll take it in, you'll push it, you'll hand sell it to your customers. The, the second order is always going to come. The third order sometimes comes as well, but it's that fourth and fifth order that uh, really lets you know how your brand is doing. And so what we've seen is just an acceleration and a, and a very positive trajectory in all the sales with our retail partners um, to the point that, you know, our biggest concern now is how do we get more cigars from our manufacturing partners not yeah. how do we open more retailers, you know, so. Uh, That's a great place to be. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's interesting yeah. You know, we, you know, I know that, that we're still, we haven't gotten exactly to the exclusive part yet, but ironically, you know, it is Monday and this is a great kind of uh, tips and advice. It's, it's kind of like a, we're doing a little, I don't know, if I were out there listening, I would definitely be listening to all this. I think it's very interesting to hear how you've evolved and, and what you've done to change things up and how it's working. And it's it's great. You could almost teach a little class on it. Yeah, well, it's fun. And it's fun to bring the, you know, I mean, I, I, I think uh, if you get the right team, uh, you can accomplish some great things. And we, we have a great team and everybody has good input. And we have guys on the streets now uh, that are, physically going. We're constantly listening to the retail partners. We continuously want to evolve. So I feel like we came a long way with the new rebrand in 2019. We had a new booth at the PCA show. Things have been really going uh, very positively for our company, uh, but we, we don't want to stop there. We want to continue yeah. to listen to those retail partners, get their feedback, what's working, what's not working, and, um, and just do the very best we can. And so we've got some exciting things coming out, with, uh, such as the 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 uh, PCA show exclusive. Um, now this is an entirely new cigar for us. Um, you know, we have had the, we started off five years ago with an IPCPR uh, cigar that was only available at the IPCPR show. Now it's, now it's called just the show. And the reason we call it the show is in 2019, the transition. Uh, is, that, yeah. is that right? About yep. IPCPR, PCA. Yep. We didn't quite know and we were, putting it all yeah. together, what the real, the new name was going to be for the organization. So we just called it the show. Uh, and, 
and so uh, I love the introduction of these show exclusive products for PCA. It reminded me when I started in the business back in 1992. Uh, I would go to the RTDA show at that time, and as a retailer, it was uh, it was just it was great to get out of the retail store, refocus, uh, learn about new products that are coming in the industry, make connections with other manufacturers in the industry, and it was uh, you know, and you would get show deals, and you would get you know if you didn't if you weren't at that show, you weren't getting certain cigars you you know you weren't getting those deals and um, of, of course since then that's changed a bit where manufacturers are pushing their deals yeah. out prior to the show but this is at least something i think moving in the right direction uh that retailers can be excited about going to the to the pca show and i encourage right. all retailers if you haven't you know if you're not planning on going i would strongly reconsider um it looks like the moment there's momentum um, and just coming off the TPE show, which uh, I was just there for a couple of days, uh, but we had a booth at TPE. Uh, people just that at that show were so excited to reconnect with people, um, handshakes, hugs, all those kind of things that we haven't had for a couple of years now. And and the PCA show is, I mean, that's that's the Super Bowl of of our industry. And so uh, you know, so if you haven't booked a, a, a ticket, get a ticket. This is going to be a great show and. I'm sure you can talk more about the numbers, but from every, from all accounts that I'm hearing, this is going to be a very strong show. Yeah, we have a, a ton of interest. A lot of uh, uh, retailers are are uh, really excited. Um, <laughs> got some sort of weird spam things going on here, so I'm going to delete that comment. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people are really excited. We've uh, just been hearing a lot. You know, Aaron's been on the phones. I've gotten quite a few calls too uh, of people that are are to, to your point. They're just they're happy to be back. Look, this is a social industry, and so this is the social event for the very social industry, right? And I think one of the key points in all of this, I think that a lot of people have talked about missing out on. Not only is it the relationships and friendships and the, the cigar family, right? But one of the things that you mentioned, I think really people have started to understand what they're missing, which is um, the connection with the, the between the retailer and the manufacturer and what that relationship can breed as far as better business ideas. And, and, and you're saying, look, we're constantly looking for feedback. This is one of the best places where you get to see so many retailers and have those conversations and, and be able to have that time where you're away from the store. They can focus, you can focus, and you can really kind of dive in and digest some of those aspects. And a lot of folks have said, God, I didn't really realize how much I missed that component of the business until I didn't have the opportunity to come to the show. And so I think so right. many people are really excited about not only seeing people because they enjoy the people, but also because of, hey, look, we're going into a very important year coming out of this pandemic. How do we take this excitement from the boom that we've experienced here and continue to make that a trajectory where it goes up and we don't feel anything come off of this growth in the industry? So I think a lot of people are are really kind of tuned in on that. And that's what we've been hearing. Good. So I wanted to dive in right here because you mentioned it. Debuting now is the Crux PCA, it's the show, which I think is great because it kind of harkens back to the whole MLB making it to the show type of thing. So it's, you know, this this upper echelon cigar. So please, uh, if you wouldn't mind, let's dive in. And what is the Crux show special that you all have this year? Yeah. So to circle back on that, it really it really wasn't important as a retailer at that time. And that's that's why uh, the show exclusive is is really important. Um, it's it was a time that, you know, you could go and learn and, and get new products and get some show deals um, and and essentially pay for your trip and get out of the store and refocus and so we wanted to put together a truly special cigar for pca uh, so we had chose our our limitada series in a special size uh, the limitada is a is an eight to ten year old wrapper uh, that's grown exclusively for us by the placencia family uh, it's yep it's offered there's eight different tobaccos in the cigar uh, oh, wow. it's, uh, yeah and the size is a it's a robusto but it's a it's it's a box press marblehead uh, robusto. So the marblehead oh, finish is on the cap. It's basically uh, and you'll see it at the show when you come to the show. But it's a it's a round awesome. cap. It's uh, based off the old Cuban 109. Um, so it's not quite a torpedo torpedo, and it's not a round cap. But it's got this nice marble kind of roundness to it. And so why I've always liked that 109 shape is. Uh, 
uh, two reasons. Uh, it's got a softer feel in the mouth when you're smoking it. Uh, but more importantly, like a torpedo, you can you can cut a little bit off the cigar for a firmer draw and a lot more off mm. the tip of the cap of the cigar if you want an easier draw. So you get to control the draw off that cigar. And, um, and, and they're offered in 20 count boxes, same thing, 10 cigars on the right side, two five packs on the left side, uh, and, and a beautiful five pack as well. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good cigar. So anybody that comes by, we'll, we'll bring a few samples for people to try. And, and, uh, we, we don't make a lot of them. We make, uh, I think we'll make a thousand of thousand 20 count boxes. So 20,000 cigars total. So they, they tend to go fairly quick, um, you know, anytime we do a, a, a lower run on the Limitada series. Uh, but that's, uh, so anybody coming out to the show could try to see us day one. We'll make sure that we get some on, on the order for you. Awesome. So what kind of uh, flavors is this? Is this more kind of medium bodied? Is it in, in what kind of, uh, kind of flavor profile, according to, to, to Jeff Hogan, is this uh, special Limitada? Yeah. Well, the, you know, the Limitada, the Limitada, you know, I, I don't, tend to use uh like others maybe and I, I, I this might be good or bad but i don't tend to use a lot of subjective terminology but as far sure. as the the body itself it it was designed like most of our blends to kind of be right down the middle medium uh the tobaccos are of an age that they're um you know it's going to produce a very clean finish which is really important and you know and that's one thing that we try to do with all of our blends not just the pca uh, uh, show exclusive is we try to create blends that are very clean that create no palate trauma so when you're done smoking a cigar you can go light up another one and that pca will be a good one to do that if, if they like it they're going to light up another one um and that's great for the retailer more cash register rings so that's that was the design perfect perfect Oh, uh, well, all right. So you heard it here, folks. We're going to have the uh, special Crux Limitada Robusto box press uh, that's going to be available exclusively for the PCA retailers who come to the show. A uh, thousand boxes. So get them before they are gone. So please get to the Crux booth early and place those orders so we can make sure you get these great products. Uh, and again, uh, again, kind of going back to the, the branding aspect of it. Um, one of the things I did want to mention is that for me, it's just it's one of those things to where if you smoke a cigar, you want to remember the brand, if, especially if you're trying it for the for you know the first time as a consumer, um, and that's one of the things I thought was so potent about your rebrand. And again, like I said, I didn't see it beforehand, but I was like, it's instantly recognizable when I saw it. Yeah, like a, out like a display on one of the outer walls at your booth in 2019. I was like, this is so easy to remember that if I were to see this uh, on the shelf of a retailer, I'd instantly know that this was Crux, and I would know. So if I smoke the cigar and I need to go back, it's very easy to remember uh, being able to go find it back on the shelves. And so I think that that's, to your point, I think it helps the retailer in that aspect too, as Jay talked about, right? It's beautiful packaging. It helps them sell it too. It helps the consumer remember what they need. So it helps them be able to, to, to sell more of those products as well, rather than spending a half hour trying to remember which color the band was and, and what was the name or what was, you know, potential that aspect. And trying to describe i've heard many retailers like okay i walked in the humidor and i turned right and i think it was like four or five rows down and i think it was on the third shelf and maybe it was red or maybe it was black and oftentimes they hear their consumers do that and i think that's one of the things that i really like about your brand is that it's just so easy to remember thank you scott well that's uh that's great to hear that's what we're trying to do and if anybody ever has suggestions on how to clean it up more we're we're you know we're listening all the time so thank you Perfect. Well, we are very much looking forward to seeing you and the entire Crux family uh, in just a week. Uh, well, I guess about a week and a half now. I guess it's uh, <laughs> I, I leave in a week, but I, I'm, I'm there generally longer than most people are. So, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing you and the entire Crux family there and uh, hopefully get an opportunity to uh, enjoy the Limitada. Um, but, yeah, please pass along our best to everybody. And uh, maybe Certainly Casey will. and I might have a chance to, to throw the ball around a little bit while we're there, too. So Yeah, get some golf tips for him, too. He's, I will. Yeah, I need all he, the one tips I can he, get. He pounds the ball. He's, you know, once yeah. again, I think he hits a lot of golf balls, which is good. It's. Uh, I'll give him I some some hair tips. Did he, I think he found, did he finally go au oh, oh, natural like I did? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, was, good. Yeah, he was, all natural. He was, With the beard. He was clinging it. He was, yeah. I, thought well, you, I actually thought you were Casey when you first came out. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know Casey was on it, but uh, yeah, it's all right. You guys can be uh, twins now. Oh, that poor bastard. If he's getting mistaken for me, oh, I'm sorry, Casey. Nah, both are good looking guys in shape, <laughs> ex baseball players. You know, it's all uh, good. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, looking forward to, to seeing you and trying the cigar. And I hope you have a great week and safe travels. And uh, yeah.
Thank you again, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Thanks for reaching out. Look forward to seeing everybody. All right. Take bye. care. See you, Aaron. Bye, Scott. Bye. Take care, all.